to you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What a wonderful privilege God has given for every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody say Amen. Praise God. I Aaron Deva Priyam, servant of God, coming to you all in the mighty presence of God. Before entering the word of God, shall we all bow down our heads and close our eyes. Gracious Heavenly Father, Almighty God, God of heaven, Son, Lord of Lords, King of Kings, Most High God, Lord of Hosts, we thank you and praise you, praise you, praise you, Father, Living God, Mighty God, Wonder Working God, King of the Universe. Father God, as you are speaking to us, Master God, the seven churches, the seven characters of single soul, every soul must be, be prepared as you are coming very soon, Father God, and as the, these are the last days, and you are giving us the instructions how to prepare. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, once again, Lord. Lead us and guide us in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Dear friends, it's a wonderful privilege that we are in the presence of God. And it's a wonderful privilege that God is giving the last, the last moment how to be prepared in the presence of God. I do not know how much, how far you are following as I have started this uh, seven churches, the series of messages. And this is the third part of uh, the series of this message. The revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ and he has given for the seven churches. He called specially the Apostle John, the disciple of John to the uh, island of Patmos. And from there God has given these beautiful letters and uh, appreciation and also the what is exactly the 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 drawback what is the minus the negative aspect of our preparations that's what the word of god is talking about dear friends and as we have seen that church of ephesus and church of smyrna we have seen that church of ephesus they didn't have everything they had well but they didn't have the the first love of jesus christ Missing that God corrected, he gave the, a clue point how to get rid of from that and come back, repent and come back so that to uh, receive the fruit of the life tree. That's what the word of God talked. And then second we have seen that the church of Smyrna and they God alerted again that how to be prepared as the, in the, the place was the synagogue of Satan. And God said very clearly there the how to be prepared in the times of persecution. That's what uh, in the time of the persecution, how to be prepared. The second part he has given. So whoever overcomes the persecution, who, who, whoever uh, stand for Christ, they will receive the crown of life, he said. So there is a tree of life, the crown of life. And now we have come to the third church, the church of Pergamum, church of Pergamum. In the church, church of Pergamos and this church, how God is speaking exactly, it's written in Revelation chapter 2, verse 12 to 17. We see there the church is, this is the church specially called as the compromising church. Compromising church. We have seen that the lawlessness church, the Ephesus, and the persecuted church the church of Smyrna and now the compromising church. Compromising. This is a very, very important. This particularly this church, we can see this character. We have in so many places. We are getting compromised with the world. Compromised with the world. That's a very, very important thing. Here, again, the, the power of God, the, uh, the, the, the presence of God coming to this angel for this church and then speaking about this first of all Pergamum the church of Pergamum Pergamum means what what exactly we are seeing here in the modern city nowadays it is called Bergama. it is present it is called in Turkey it's called as Bergama. it is nearly 50 miles from Smyrna so near to the uh, Smyrna and here we are seeing in this particular, it's a developed city actually in those days itself, in the first century what I am talking about. So it is quite developed that time and uh, it, it, there are so many buildings are there and it is it, it looks like a, a city, a city, the Pergamum is, is a city looks like. 
and so the people are when uh, this place they they were quite proud people here they are we are from city we are know we, we we know education we know everything in that type of manner they had the people were proud and then uh, in the city also the atmosphere of the city also it's quite beautiful and it's one of the beautiful city in asia i believe and here even a wonderful uh, the seminary that i mean the buildings are there for uh, a, a theater like buildings are there and especially a, a, a best theater in this pergamum 3500 people they have the capacity to sit and have the this one uh, sit together and have the whatever sharing the discussions and whatever meetings here in this so it looks like almost like a, a big city those days so pergamum why do call it a pergamum means here uh, it is uh, something it's called the production of uh, papyrus the production of papyrus where that is the material for writing the writing material like for example like a pencil the material so that type of the material is available from this here these bushes are there in this place so papyrus it is converted into the pergamus so that's what uh, pergamum we what we call now and here one more important thing also that's a roman emperor this is what we are seeing we are always looking here for every church had a problem with the emperorship the roman empire this is the total under control of roman empire the seven churches so the main target is the emperor so emperor feeling is he is a god he is god everybody should worship the emperor the roman empire so that's what uh, the thing always they, they had a problem this first beginning christians because they are supposed to do so here they, we, we had a here this people here uh, the, uh, the caesar augustus and his uh, a big building temple was there in the pergamum caesar augustus building so we need to everybody has to go there and worship and this is what it had there is a one more important thing in this particular city what do you call it is satan's shots satan shots dear friends in this pergamum the most things uh, were happening is there were so many killings were there killings whoever not accepting to worship uh, uh, the roman emperor they will be killed they will be killed so there were so many deaths were there and also so many killings the murders so many things were there that's why we see here uh, jesus uh, he mentions about the uh, this is the place of satan's throne see how jesus christ himself he explained about this is the area the pergamum area is satan's throne throne means you know that is the actual official place of the devil official place of the devil so that much uh, atmospheric that means you just imagine there were deaths so many deaths means it's all about the presence of the devil that's what we are seeing here so the pergamum pergamum church it is uh, particularly especially lord jesus christ he is addressing to this church angel and he is mentioning in verse 12 we are seeing there and to the angel of the church in pergamum right these things says he who has the sh- sharp to edge sword i know your works and where you dwell where satan's throne in and you hold fa- hold fast to my name and did not deny my faith even in the days in which and the pause was my faithful faithful matrai so here jesus explaining a very clearly about this church my dear friends listen very carefully he is telling that i know your works but here god is telling the double edge sword word is speaking to you double edge sword so these are the words of him who has the sharp double edge sword here he is mentioning about the double edge sword in one other place we can see that that's what 
the spirit of god is talking about double edged sword double edged sword means it's in both sides it beats us off it talks to the preacher it talks to the who is the hearer who is speaking who is hearing both will have the same cutting with this double edged sword the word of god so this was the john's message he was talking to the pergamum and this message was holding the sharp two edged sword this word it's a very sharp so very important to think here because it is the it is the the lord's readiness to the judgment god is talking about uh, particularly this church the talking about the judgment you must be careful because so far he was telling the first church he said that you are missing something god's law second he said that you need to overcome overcome through the uh, the the persecution not to fear but here he is talking about in this particular church and this is what it's a very dangerous one in this church what i exactly speaking is you are getting compromised with this word so here the people are mixing with the world and mixing with the word of god and that's what it makes the present christians even the even the present christians today that we all are moving as a christians but also we are mingling with the world and some or other place we are getting compromised as well dear friends that's the spirit of god is talking about how long you will be compromised how long you will be on both sides hypocritism that's what jesus said very clearly the hypocrisy even he saw the pharisees and scribes he said you you who hypocrites you look like a white wash tombs outside looks very nice but inside of having all the calamity clench and all sort of things because you are compromised revelation chapter 1 verse 16 says that he had in his right hand seven stars out of his mouth a sharp two edged sword and his countenance was like the sun shining in its strength so in what is saying is it's a sharp double edged sword it penetrates both and that's what specially giving warning to the church uh, the people of uh, church uh, church of pergamum so here we are seeing that first uh, jesus he is explaining about this church talking about i know where you live so this is very important thing dear friends in the church in the body of christ we must know that the what type of atmosphere we are live dear friends so very important thing you are praising god you are worshiping god you are hearing god you are preaching god you are reading word of god in what type of atmosphere what about the place is very important the place is very very important my dear friends what type of atmosphere we are keeping it and here he say here word of god is saying where satan has his throne oh church of pergamum your place is the satan's place you are sitting where the the place of satan so we must be very careful that you remain true to my name and he's giving a credit point here in spite of having a circumstances of the dangerous thing but still you are sticking on to me you are true to my name you did not renounce your faith you did not deny your faith in me you did not uh, change your faith yeah it's a credit point so in spite of having that terrible situations so what we are learning from this church is we are not changing the faith so so far it's better so far it looks like fine you are not changing the faith in me even in the days of antipas antipas 
He was a, a faithful witness. He was a God servant in this particular church of Pergamum. And he has been put to death. And his death was horrible. And they have killed him by keeping him in a, 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 a bronze bull. Inside of that, they put inside and made it to heat that bronze. And he, uh, he just died. He melted off inside. So that's what the Satan, Satan lives in this area, the Pergamon. So there are circumstances in our, our heart, there are the place that uh, the devil atmosphere, the devil thoughts, the devil, more devil atmosphere is there. In that place when we are being put to be in the part of, uh, be sticking on to the body of Christ. And that's what the living word of God is telling that we have to be very strong, not to be renounce the faith of Lord Jesus Christ. So Revelation 2.13 he says that here that uh, uh, Antipas my faithful witness who was put to death in your city where Satan lives in that day he died. So Pentamon believers they lived in a very difficult place. They lived in a very difficult atmosphere and surrounded by a lot of pagan influences, even idols. And yet they are sticking on to the Christ name. They did not deny him during any difficult times. Praise the Lord. So that is the, a, a something test called as stress test. So Pergamum believers, they had a stress test. Stress test means you are in very prone to get into trouble and even that area is very difficult the devil's area in such area you are able to sticking on to the Lord and that's that's what it's called as stress test so if they were refused to budge but be faithful to Christ Jesus praise the Lord dear friends have you ever come across the different difficult situations and still you are not compromising with that. Maybe you sometimes you may need to compromise in your working place. You need to compromise in your uh, area of your living. You need to compromise in this one. There are some situations. There are some situations. So and so cities. So and so places. That you are not supposed to do this. You are not supposed to do that. And these sort of situations are there. Coming upon. Dear friends. These are the, the lost days we are going to come across. But how far you are able to survive? How, 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 to, how, to be, how to live in Christ Jesus? It's not that worldly manner to behave. It's not the worldly manner to go on fight with somebody or go, go, go on end up with arguments. It is something that we need that the Spirit of God must work with us. Praise the Lord. You must allow the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ the power of the Holy Spirit and that makes the actual knowledge and understanding how to survive. That's what the word of God is talking about. So here in Christians in Pergamum and that particular man called Antipas and which we mentioned before, he was a, a faithful servant of God. Praise the Lord. He was so faithful. He witnessed he witnessed, he, he was sticking on to the faith in Christ Jesus and I believe he was a physician and uh, he was, uh, they, they have been put upon him, yeah, they, uh, they, they accused him by saying that he secretly is making a, uh, the propagate, propagating, propagating the Christianity. That's what they have put a blame upon him and they uh, they, 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 they put him to death. That's what we are seeing. So they condemned him to death. They placed him inside a copper bull and uh, which was then heated over a fire until it was so red hot and he died, dear friends. And who is witnessing? Come on, did you saw that one? Who did witness and the first death? Lord Jesus Christ, somebody say Amen. Praise the Lord. For whatsoever our struggle, whatsoever our thing, who is witnessing? Our Lord Jesus Christ Himself, He witnesses for us. Today, what is your suffering? 
today what is your situation today what you are struggling what your position dear friend it has been witnessed by lord jesus christ for you and me we may think that nobody is looking at me we may think that uh, nobody is uh, uh, taking care of me nobody is recognizing me but lord jesus christ of nazareth he is recognized you and me that's what we need to make sure of it praise the lord so the church here uh, here the church however it looks like uh, jesus he noted that uh, there is uh, something sin inside He is telling this. He is reminding, and the boss, the great servant of God, he died with very respectably sticking on to my faith. But still, God said very clearly, still there is uh, something. Nevertheless, I have few things. That's what verse fourteen to fifteen. Jesus Himself is giving that same coding, my dear friend. So, in spite of we are very strong in faith, in spite of the strugglings, but still we are very strong. But always make sure that there is something to be remind. That's what the word of God is talking about. Here, God said very clearly for this particular church. Nevertheless, I have few things against you. You have people there who hold to the teaching of. Balam. So the teachings of Balam, we are seeing that Balam and Balak. These two people we know very well. Balam was a, a, a he was a, a a prophet uh, prophesizing, and Balak was a king. So Balak, the, he he made that to entice the Israelites to do the sin. So that's what we call as. Bal Balam Balam's doctrine. This Balam he he played a a lot of play because since he was not actually actually he was a a chosen prophet. Rather he was a a prophet when God approached him. He feared God and he listened to God as well. But his doctrine theory was totally. entirely wrong thing this is what it happened that what he made is he made balak the king and made the corrupt of these people israelites and to the uh, make them to eat the the food which has been put for the sacrifice of the pagan gods so what are it is is that the pagan gods food you are eating So it's a it's a it's a meaning actually it's a it's actual meaning is you are getting compromised with these holy things, compromised with the world. You are a believer but getting compromised with the world. That's what the spirit of God is talking about here, my dear friend. We see very clearly here uh, in Revelation chapter two verse fourteen to fifteen is he talks about the. the teachings of balam teachings of balam so the balam's teachings you can eat no problem you can mingle with no problem so what happened this israelites they were they were uh, mixed with the uh, people in numbers chapter 25 verse 1 to 3 if you go through there we can see there now israel reminded in acacia grow and the people began to commit har harlotry with the woman of moab was too they invited the people to the sacrifice of their gods and the people ate and bowed down to their gods who israelites god is god is giving this explanation to john to tell the people of church of pergamum so israel was joined to baal of peer joined to baal of peer and the anger of the lord was aroused so they mingled my dear friends compromised with the world compromised with the devil activities compromised with the enemy that's what the god said very clearly and he mentioned here 
even they had a, a sacrifice and they had a, a religious compromise can you get this point they had a, a religious compromise pergamum church of pergamum they had a, a people some of the people they had a, a religious compromise and they also had a moral compromise as well what is moral moral compromise sexual immorality and they had a, a sexual activities with the 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 women of moabites so that is the, the original balaam's deceitful work happened and that's what we read in numbers chapter 25 verse 1 to 3 numbers chapter 31 verse 15 16 it says that and moses said to them have you kept all women alive look this woman cost the children of israel through the counsel of balaam to trespass against the lord in the incident of fear and was plagued among the congregation of the lord so you have done wrong with this woman and there is a, a plague falling upon you all and also there there are followers of the nicolaitans nicolaitans they also nicolaitans at that time they were calling nicolaitans and it is mentioned here only in revelation they were the actually the followers of nicolas in acts chapter 6 verse 5 and those uh, it was keep on coming that generation got corrupted later and that corrupted followed to the balance doctrine that you can mingle you can mix you can marry you can have a, a sexual immorality activities and fornication and all sort of things you can do it this is the the track it became totally and that's why they call as a nicolaitans so the followers of this all the uh, the wrong root of the devil things and they were eating the things offered for the idols and having the fornication following the balaam's doctrine and they are mentioned in this uh, even in the church of ephesus in the church of ephesus also they had a, the same problem having the following of the nicolaitans and that's what revelation chapter 2 verse 6 we are seeing so they were like a same group like a same teachings of balaam nicolaitans and though the exact nature of their doctrine and practice is unknown but still these are the people it happened so jesus here he issues a, a a clarification that repent of your sin compromising with the world compromising with the idols compromising with the, the sexual immorality compromising with the pagan gods compromising with the other people so repent of yourself again he is giving a warning for this third church as well dear friends roman chapter 12 verse 2 it says and do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that god and acceptable and perfect will of god so he says that you must uh, you must uh, uh, you must not be compromised with the world and you are not supposed to be conformed to this world dear friends while we are worshiping god while we are uh, doing a, a good job here he said that in spite of the a terrible situation in spite of the terrible positions but still you did not mingle and that's what he is appreciating but the problem is it is a devil's place surrounding area so you must be very 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 careful not to be compromised this is what the word of god is talking about dear friends so do not be compromised so jesus uh, he notes the judgment he is giving it he is telling that the judgment will be fall upon you for the church of pergamum if you did not repent revelation chapter 2 verse 16 he said that i will soon come to you and 
will fight against them with the sword of my mouth, which is double edged sword. So that's the word of God. So, word of God is giving an alarm for every one of us, my dear friends, that we must uh, repent not to get compromised this world. Nicolaitans, that means that is the, the teachings of Helen's error, and it can take place to destroy us. We have to be very careful. The Balaam's doctrine. So he made Balak to make the Israelites to be mingled with the Moabites, and slowly they were, in spite of their had received the blessings of a prophecy. We know all that story. Balaam was going on a donkey and the presence of God appeared and donkey spoke and God spoke to uh, Balaam you must uh, prophesy uh, the, the blessings upon Israel in spite of Balak asked him to curse them so all blessings they received but finally Israelites people they were getting corrupted by compromising with the Moabites They had a sexual immorality and they ate the food of the idol worship's food. So they are getting, they got corrupted. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 8. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will kill with the breath of his mouth and bring to nothing by the appearance of his coming. Praise God. Jesus makes a final promise to the believers of Pergamum here. So here he says that the lawless one will be revealed. The Antichrist will be revealed very shortly. A person of devil, Satan becomes Antichrist. And the beast. And what we call now lawless one. Will be revealed. Whom the Lord Jesus will kill him. With the breath of his mouth. Praise God. He will be killed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. Praise God. Dear friends. We are holding the double edged sword of our Lord Jesus Christ, His tongue, His mouth, His breath. Praise God. And that's what, what we are calling this as the living word of God. It's not an ordinary book, my dear friend. It's a very, very ordinary, a terrible double-edged sword. It's a sword. It will smash the devil. The white stone and 
the new name praise god for church of ephesus who overcomes to eat fruit from tree of life and for smarna for the faithful the crown of life and who overcomes shall not hurt by the second death praise god and here the new name the new name for the church of pergamum for smarna only the uh, the crown of life and they will escape the second death so that is the one character so third character is you are getting get rid of from the the situation of uh, this uh, to overcome these things the compromising with the world we receive the the hidden manna and then uh, we have the white stone and then new name will be given remember new name jacob once he received the blessings of god he received the new name Israel praise the lord today god wants us to do the same thing my dear friend so here we are seeing that uh, the three blessings it concern to the every believers victory from the not to compromise with this world consistent with the blessings and it has been given for the over churches but now the third church the third character we are seeing that hidden manna it is the manna the hidden the ark of covenant and it is representative of god's faithful presence and its sustenance the source of strength the manna is source of strength for a sustenance and white stone it is a a white stone we remember stone means the 10 commandments written on white stone praise the lord and it is the the uh, the temple events when ancient times i believe that uh, one of the stones on the high priest breastplate so the high priest and he was the first priest aaron was the first priest and then elias so it goes on so the priest must have the the white stones will be kept on the breastplate so that is the in exodus chapter 28 verse 21 if you go through that the white stone and the stone shall be with the names of the children of israel 12 and the stones according to their names and then engraven on the signet everyone with his name shall they be according to the 12 tribes will be there on the priest this thing so that is the stone i will give you the stone so priest to hold the praise the lord our chief priest is lord jesus christ when we accept lord jesus christ we receive the priesthood so you preach the word of god somebody say amen praise god and then finally we receive the new name new name for the new jerusalem my name is maybe called as aaron but the new name is the yeshua the lord jesus christ praise god that's what the new name it comes to this wonderful church. dear friends this is what not to be compromise you are done very good this is the place of satan's throne but still it's a very good that you have been sustained and you took hold of my faith and your faith kept inside of me and you still can't to be good but not to get compromise compromise means it is just for the sake of shake up just for the sake of what to do it is now it should happen i am on the stage so i have to compromise i am on duty i have to compromise i am in the situation i have to compromise later i will see this what god said be careful in the mighty name of jesus christ not to get compromise so no religious compromise no moral compromise the devil will get when the female or anything thinks of the sexual immorality get compromise religious things some or other places we are getting compromise you must be careful my dear friends that's what the lord is saying if you are overcoming this like a church of burka so beautiful Overcome, you will receive the hidden.
hidden mana and then you will receive that the great privilege of having that uh, uh, the white stone praise the lord praise the lord and then you will receive the new name and that name will be written in the life book to enter into the kingdom of god in heaven in the everlasting life with the lord jesus christ praise the lord may god bless and let us again remind the character not to get compromised with this world through the character the church of pergamum praise the lord and that is the third one get prepared to receive lord jesus christ in the midair and that is the rapture time is running out my dear friend time to realize and get rid of from this and get caught in the word of god praise god may god bless you all shall we all bow down our heads and close our eyes gracious heavenly father almighty god god of heaven son lord of lords king of kings most high god lord of hosts we thank you lord most god make us not to get compromised with this world and devil and all the activities of this father god not to be as a master god to get compromised with the balance doctrine not to get compromised with the nicolaitans having this master god the religious compromise or a moral compromise in any place in our life master god but stick on to the faith in christ jesus karaba shara sandal kaba thank you holy spirit once again master god talking uh, talking with us master god for the church of pergamum reminding us master god if you overcome this repent and come back i will give the hidden manna and white stone and the new name praise god thank you holy spirit speaking so far master god father god this wonderful father god the revelation given to this church and that character must be there now so the character of ephesus which you told master god father lord and that's so father god giving the a life tree of life the fruit of tree of life to eat thank you jesus and smarna the father god you given this privilege of master god that crown of life to receive and escape the second death and then church of pergamum receiving the hidden manna the word of god lord jesus christ and white stone you are our stone the corner stone Lord Jesus Christ and the new name the new name the name of above all names the Lord Jesus Christ so my name is father god to say the Jesus Christ of last what a privilege thank you holy spirit once again whoever watching this video right bless them abundantly instantly stick up my father god must not touch them with the power of the holy spirit whoever watching this video right now be healed in any position father god must not open their wounds for the child lord must not touch them and heal them father god father god must not let them come out of this financial crisis right now father god and let them must god to pass god can keep the hope in you father lord thank you this last days we must be prepared to receive lord jesus christ thank you for this spirit father god i pray for every brother and sister in church touch them and heal them in the mighty name of jesus thank you lord you are speaking to this church father god explain to us what the last days to be prepared and get rid of from the devil activities come back you are telling this very clearly giving the option and chance for every one of us father god help us master god in jesus mighty name we pray amen amen praise the lord may the love of our heavenly father almighty god yahweh be upon us and our lord jesus christ having a double edged sword of his tongue double edged sword of his mouth double edged sword of his breath it is going to kill the lawless person the anti christ the devil satan and giving the opportunity for us father god or not to get compromise at any cost and giving the communion of the holy spirit be upon us now and for all in jesus mighty name we pray amen praise the lord
praise the lord dear friends it's a wonderful privilege that god has given for every one of us thank you this is the third church we are discussing at the church of pergama and we will be move on to the uh, the next message for the church of titania so be uh, prepared to listen that message the next coming